Well, what a wonderful way to uh, start our carol service. Hello and welcome uh, to our carol service. This is the first time in three years that we've been able to meet back here at uh, St. Andrews, so you're all very, very welcome. And we appreciate you coming out on a cold December evening to this very special annual event. Thank you so much, uh, parents and grandparents and carers. Great to see you all here. The children have told me that tonight, the better you family sing, the better they're going to sing. So the game is on. Uh, Mrs. Maura Hunter, chair of our school's Board of Governors, will bring a vote of thanks at the end of this evening, which means that it falls to me to go over a few bits and pieces before we really get started. Could you please make sure that mobile phones are set to silent, just so that they don't go off in the middle of our singing? In the event of a fire, please make your way carefully to the nearest marked fire exit. School staff will bring the boys and girls outside and we will meet uh, in the car park area or on the grass outside, whichever is closest. But of course, church staff will direct you in the event of any fire evacuation. Please, parents, feel free to clap after the children have performed each piece. If in doubt when to, just follow the teacher's lead. If you wish to take a photograph tonight, that is fine. But can I ask you to do two things? One, please remember that some poor soul is sitting behind you. And two, please don't share photographs or video clips on social media. Just please keep any photos that you take for your own personal use. Thank you. After tonight, uh, after tonight's carol service, uh, you will be able to re-watch the carol service on YouTube. Now, school will let you know whenever it has been uploaded, but for any relatives or perhaps relatives who are living uh, overseas, uh, abroad, you'll be able to share the link with them and they will be able to watch it on Craig of Primary's YouTube channel. So it is being recorded tonight and it will be shared with you in due course. There is a closing collection at the end uh, of tonight's carol service. And tonight's collection uh, is for the local charity, Team Dot. Uh, of course, a charity which is for uh, very obvious reasons, very close to our hearts here at Craiga Primary. Now, we all know the times are tight, but if you can spare something, it doesn't matter if it rattles, jingles, or rustles in the wind, please put something in, if you can. Look out for children with great big, begging, sad-looking eyes, holding out plates, and that's where you put your dosh on the way out. But as I say, just whatever you can, and if you can't, don't worry about it at all. Let me verbally salute, before we begin, just the excellent staff of Craiga Primary School, from the cleaners through to the teachers, they're a fantastic, hard-working team who give 100% for the sake of the girls and boys all the year through. A little special mention goes to Mr. Larmer because a lot of tonight's preparation falls on his shoulders in particular, although it is a full team effort. Also want to say thanks because I'm not sure that Moira will because she's part of the team, so I'll do it now. I want to thank St. Andrews for hosting us tonight. Uh, I want to thank its praise band over here. Not so much the Rolling Stones, but more the rock that doesn't roll. I want to thank Tom on the sound desk. Tom has been helping us with sound for many years now. Thank you, Tom. The congregational members for providing supper, to which you're all invited at the end. And to Robin, the minister here at St. Andrews, who's also a school governor and a really good friend to our school. Special thanks also to Moira Hunter and other school governors for their hard work and support uh, to our school and the encouragement and support they give me through the year. So folks, that's me. If you enjoy tonight's carol service, please tell family and friends and recommend Craiga Primary School to them. If you don't enjoy tonight, please tell them that you are at Listen to Shara's. 
they might have more Christmas lights than we do, but we have all the brightest bulbs. So with that in mind, and all out of the way, we can all relax and we can enjoy the end product of the children's hard work and practicing. I know that you'll feel every bit as proud as I do as we watch them perform and take us through the evening's uh, calendar of songs. Thank you so much. Our story begins in a town called Nazareth with a young woman called Mary who was engaged to be married to a carpenter named Joseph. Mary and Joseph were two ordinary people but their lives changed forever the day an angel appeared to Mary with astonishing news.
Although she was very afraid at first, Mary trusted what the angel Gabriel told her. She felt so blessed that she, <clears throat> of all the women on earth, had been chosen for such an amazing purpose. Do not be afraid, Mary, you have the Son, the Son of God. But Joseph was worried about what other people would say, and he thought about leaving Mary. But then an angel appeared to him too, telling him not to be afraid. The child truly was the Son of God. After this, Joseph didn't hesitate any longer. Do not worry, Mary, we will be fine. He knew it was right for Mary to be his wife and for him to bring up the baby as his own. Just before the baby was due to be born, the Roman soldiers announced that there was to be a census. People of Nazareth, you must return to the town of birth. Everyone had to travel to their own towns to be registered, and this meant a long journey for Mary and Joseph. They set off from Nazareth to Bethlehem, with Mary riding on a donkey. Bethlehem was full to bursting and everyone was struggling to find a bed for the night. I don't think I can walk any further, everyone was full. 
She and Joseph were very grateful when, at last, they found a stable in which they could shelter. Excuse me, can I help you? You can stay here for tonight. In this humble place where no one would expect the Son of God to be born, Mary gave birth to her baby. She named him Jesus, just as the angel had told her to do. As there was no bed for the baby Jesus, she laid him in a manger full of hay. That night, some shepherds were watching over their sheep on a hillside near Bethlehem. The sheep were bleating and restless, as if they knew something important had happened in the town below. Then suddenly, to the shepherd's astonishment, a crowd of angels appeared in a blaze of light. Do not be afraid. The Savior of the world has been born. You'll find him at the dwelling place. He'll be alive in a manger.
Meanwhile, three wise and wealthy men had spotted something unusual in the night sky. A brand new star was slowly moving westward. The three men were certain this meant something important had happened. They were sure it was connected with the birth of a long-awaited king. This star looks different. It's special, let's follow it. Let's see where it takes us. Tracing the star's path, they could see it was moving towards Bethlehem. They longed to set eyes on this special child to bring him gifts and to worship him. So they set off following the star wherever it went.
coming. When the three wise men when the three wise men arrived in Jerusalem, they were summoned by King Herod, who had heard why they were in Judea. Who are these men? How, how dare they arrive in Judea? Send them to me. King, king, the good for king. Now, Herod feared that this new king would take away his crown. What Herod didn't understand was that Jesus would be a very different kind of king, a king of peace, who would send a lasting message of love and forgiveness throughout the world. But Herod felt his power was threatened, so he came up with a plan. Go and find this baby so I too can worship him. He told the three wise men to get back to him with information, pretending he too wanted to worship the baby, when in fact he was plotting to kill Jesus. After a long and towering journey, the three wise men found their faith and determination was rewarded. <laughs> Under the brightest, most glorious star they had ever seen, they found what they were looking for. There in a humble stable lay baby Jesus, the Son of God. Here was a gift more precious than any they could bring, more precious than anything the world could offer. 
They knelt down humbly in front of the child, offering what gifts they had. He brought gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, the three wise men returned to their another country by another route. And so every Christmas, we remember the miraculous event that took place in Bethlehem.
And yet, the birth of Jesus was only the beginning of a story that would change millions of lives, a story that would change the world. Well, boys and girls, tonight has been so great so far. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, you have all been super. See all your singing and all your performances. It's really got me in the Christmas spirit. Has it got any adults in the Christmas spirit? Yeah, a good few of us. So thank you so much for all you have done tonight. My name's Robin, and I'm the minister here at St. Andrews. And boys and girls, I want to ask you a question, and it might come up on the screen for me. What do people do around Christmas? Very easy. What do, what do you think people do around Christmas? What do you think? They celebrate, that's right. Any other ideas? That's right. They put up their decorations. What else do people do around Christmas? Anyone else? Wrap presents, that's a great one. What else? What else do people do around Christmas? Spend time with their family. And one more, what else do we do around Christmas? We think about Jesus, yeah. For some people, we do. You know, boys and girls, that's all right. That's what we do around Christmas. We buy presents. We spend time with our family. We might make Christmas dinner. We might play with the toys that we get. We do lots of great things around Christmas. But there's one other thing that we do at Christmas that I do, and maybe some of you have already done this year, or you've received them. Does anyone know what this is in my hand? What is it? It's a Christmas card. Hands up. Has anyone written a Christmas card or received one yet? Okay, loads of you have received them. Boys and girls, do you ever wonder why we send Christmas cards to one another? Why do we send Christmas cards? Anyone know? What, what do you think? Because of what, sorry? 
spread joy. That's right. Another th reason I think that we send Christmas cards to one another, boys and girls, is because we want to show one another that we're thinking of each other at this special time in the year. Well, you have been singing tonight, and loads of people have been reading as well the Christmas story. And you know, boys and girls, sometimes the Christmas story is a bit like a Christmas card, except God didn't send a Christmas card to us per se, but he sent a person called Jesus. In Luke chapter 2, which some of you have read, there's these words when the angel talks to the shepherds, and he says this, don't be afraid. I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all the people. This very day in David's town, your Savior was born, Christ the Lord. You see, boys and girls, when the angel announced to the shepherds that Jesus was born, he was telling the whole world, including you and I here tonight, that God loves the world. And so, this Christmas, when you're writing Christmas cards, or maybe you're sending a Christmas card to someone, here's what I want you to remember. God has also sent us a card, except it's Jesus. And Jesus is an expression of how much God loves us. And Christmas is all about joining God's family, and that's the meaning behind Christmas, that we can know God and be a part of his family forever. So when you send Christmas cards or receive one, remember, God has also sent his son, Jesus, for us. Boys and girls, thank you for listening and answering my questions. We just love having you and parents and grown-ups, everyone here at St. Andrews this evening.
I'm sure, like me, uh, most of you thought tonight, what an awful night to be dragged out of my house. I'd much prefer sitting home. Those roads and everything were awful. But I'm sure you're really glad that you came. What a fabulous night we've had. There's only one word I would use to describe it that came into my head the whole way through, and that was just, oh, wasn't it just all lovely? The whole thing from beginning to end. Children, you were absolutely fabulous. Your teachers are so proud. <laughs> now, I know you'll understand that for the children to be fabulous, there has to be a wee bit of work goes in in the background. And having taught for many years, I know that tonight just wasn't put together this afternoon. So I think, boys and girls, you know yourselves, you wouldn't be here tonight showing mommy and daddy all the wonderful things you have done if all these members of staff hadn't shouted at you, learned those words, cajoled you on your way, come on, you can do it, you're fabulous, you keep going. And also even the costumes, the costumes were amazing. So children, would you like to give all the Craiga Primary School staff a big clap and a cheer? <laughs> and obviously the last person, or people that I have to thank are you parents. Without the parents encouraging the children to come to the school each day and to help them with their words and help them with all the things that the school asks you to do, the school wouldn't exist. They are dependent on you. And if you enjoy the experience that your child has had at this school, encourage other people to join them. So staff and children, give the parents a clap. Now, uh, all that's left is for me to encourage you all to enjoy your supper in the big hall afterwards, but the children have one last message for you this evening. <laughs> 